So should I get on a preferred vendor list? That was a question asked of me uh, when I was at the last conference I was at. Preferred vendors lists, good thing, bad thing, I like them. I like the fact that people might say something nice about me because they say, well, this is somebody we prefer because they're really good. Hi, it's Bill. This is Creative License. Um, thanks again for being a part of the dog and pony show I call Creative License. And it's sponsored every week by Elector Voice and Promo Only and DJ Event Planner and DJ NTV, Disc Jockey News, and of course, my workshop, The Entertainment Experience. So preferred vendor lists are tricky, if you ask me. Uh, because usually uh, people in the venue business or uh, other vendors, they believe that it's important to give the client their opinions on other vendors. It makes them look like they know what they're talking about. It, it puts them in a situation where they are an expert, right? So, and they've been to a way more weddings than the couple who's getting married. So they want to know who, who do you prefer? Who do you like? Now, I have more problems with those lists than I, than I don't. And let me kind of go through them with you and you can agree or not agree, but that's, that's certainly okay. okay. Um, number one, I've been asked to be a part of preferred vendor lists that they have asked me to pay to be a part of. Well, first of all, um, it sounds like a bad thing. Um, I don't agree with it and not for the reasons you might think. Um, paying for referrals isn't such a bad business practice when you uh, are on the knot and they send you leads, you're paying for leads, you're paying for them to put you in front of clients. And same sort of thing with a, with a, a list or preferred vendor list, it's just that with those venues, it's difficult sometimes to be sure that you are the only name that they are mentioning. Uh, even if they've promised they're going to and you've paid to be a part of it. Um, I've had that problem before in the past. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but there's a lot of reasons why it wouldn't happen. And it isn't always because they're lying to you. It's just the way things happen sometimes. I've been a part, uh, I, I was even working at a local radio station that had me on the air. And part of the, the way that they, 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 they paid me was that they didn't have their own mobile DJ service. So they promoted mine as theirs, and that was part of my compensation. It was in my contract. Well, what they didn't do was to be sure that all the salespeople and all the other employees there at the radio station, they understood that that was an agreement, a signed legal agreement for them to recommend me and not their buddies and their friends and themselves. So it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to, and it was frustrating, but that's my own fault for not, you know, policing that agreement. That's one. The other is people say, you're amazing, man. I want to be sure I recommend you. Well, why? You're the best thing I've ever seen. Would you be, can I refer you? I'm like, absolutely you can. And then I get a call from somebody who's been at the venue and talked to that person. I said, they gave me a preferred vendor list and your name is on it. I'm like, that's great. She said, yeah, we've talked to the other two. Now we want to talk to you. I'm like the other two. Well, yeah, they, they referred three, three. Okay, the other two are people that they recommend because they're big companies and they're very inexpensive and they're easy to book. And they don't, they're not awful, but they're certainly not me. And if I'm in that same list at a much higher fee and a much different level of service, the client sees three DJs, same thing. Let's just get one of them because the, the vendor says, the, or the, the venue says that these are the people we prefer why would I get the one they prefer that's the most expensive when they prefer them all, right? So I'm usually, when that happens, I just call and say, hey, you know, go ahead and take me off the list. And it's never, it's never animosity. I'm never mad at them. They, I just make sure they understand that, you know, they're not helping me to put me on a list at my fee and put somebody else on a list that's five to 10 times less expensive than me. Um, and that's, and that's one too. And then, and then there's, you know, what are you doing? Are you getting the agreements? It's kind of what I went over already. Are you getting an agreement from them when they do that? And then what are you giving them, right? Because putting a, being on a preferred vendors list is nice, but if you aren't regularly helping them, 
And just being really great when they refer you isn't necessarily the thing that, that they need, right? If you're not doing that, then you're not necessarily getting preferred, or re referred rather. I have been doing this for a very long time and I've been on lots and lots and lots of preferred vendor lists. And most of my referrals do not come from those lists. Most of them come from my customers and the customers that have seen me and customers from 30 years ago that are still recommending me. Those referrals, those are 10 times better than the referral lists of other vendors. Now, you may have had a different experience, and I think that's great. If you want to tell me about it, tell me in the, in the notes below. Uh, otherwise, uh, you, you got my take. That's my me taking my creative license on this topic, right? Thanks for being a part of my show. 